know how fast you were going? Uh, the speed. Limit? Eighty-five. Oh, shit. Eighty-five. License registration, please. Oh, I uh, actually don't have that, but uh, about. Uh, oh, that's some ID. What you got? Uh, got a nice uh, an apple whiskey shirt. Oh, nice shirt. No, that ain't it. Registration, license, please. Oh, what's that? What you got there in the yeah, console, that's, son? That's bad boy, huh? You been drinking today? You been drinking, huh? Well, yeah, but that's that's like the good stuff. A little grandpa's cop medicine? Yeah, you can have a sip if you want. Go back to daycare, drink boy. The whole fucking thing? Get your ass out of here. everyone to Walking After Whiskey with Trevor and Travis. I'm Trev. I'm Trev. We're going to break down your latest episode of The Walking Dead tonight. And we're also going to break down this fine bottle of whiskey here, Seagram's and Seven, also known as Seven and Seven if you got the right mix, but it doesn't seem like we have it tonight. I've been drinking. Uh, we have a great show for you tonight. We're going to be a real in-depth breakdown of season, se uh, season Seven, episode 14, entitled The Other Side. Then we're going to give you a nice review of this whiskey here that most of you probably know about, and then... Uh, we're going to go to my favorite game where we drink more and more and ask each other intuitive questions about game. the show. It's a good game. It's good been paying reviews. attention. <laughs> Do your homework, baby. I'm going to get right into the reviews today. We've got a lot to talk about. A lot of rain coming down. So if you hear it, it's no it's raining in California. You hear it, clear it. The first thing we want to talk about is Sasha and Rosita, they're taking off to kill Negan. they got a plan. That's the first thing you see on this episode. And the last thing you see on the last episode is Rosita walking up says, oh, you want to visit Abraham's grave? She says, no, I need your help. Yes. So as long as you let me take the shot. Yeah, it's kind of like a little foreshadowing image, image. We see uh, Sasha, uh, um, Sasha knelt down by, by Abraham's grave. Rosita walks up again saying, well, it's time for us to go and, and do this mission. Um, Quick question. Did they ever hook up Sasha and Abraham? They were uh, hooked up? Did they ever hook up? Um, I, would think I thought be, she was playing hard to get. I think, I think it'd be off scene because after she took care of that whole business with Rosita, we had, there was some time in between where they don't really say what happened, but obviously they did all feel feelings for each other. So I would say yes, they hooked up. Okay, because they have a nice in-depth conversation later on, and she's like, were you happy? And I'm, I'm yeah, she was. I've just never seen it happen. You know, we like sex scenes here. So yeah, the whole beginning of the episode, we see uh, Rosita and Sasha kind of like uh, teaching other people how to, how to, how to battle. Uh, Maggie thinks that Rosita and Sasha are teaching everyone at the hilltop how to protect themselves and, and fight this war. Yeah, and then we, we see Daryl and Maggie talking down in the cellar there when they're hiding from uh, old Simon Says. When uh, they say, ding, 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 the saviors are coming. Yeah. And he feels that he's still torn up pretty much about uh, Gwen's death because he got up and socked Negan. Yeah. And so he's torn up about that. And she's saying, what was she saying? Yeah, well, well, Sasha, I'm sorry, uh, Maggie and Daryl uh, have been together a, a lot lately, especially at the hilltop, and then they'll be hi hid hiding out out there. But Daryl hasn't brought himself around to talking to Maggie. You see a lot of awkward silences and a lot of awkward times like, where they could talk to each other, where they decide to just go by themselves, like, brush themselves off. Uh, Daryl feels like he got Glenn killed, which in a lot of ways people say he did, he did. I mean, Negan was, was a nasty person. He might have done it anyways, but uh, Daryl's um, actions led to the result of Glenn dying. Yeah, Maggie thinks... Glenn was a good guy and had a purpose as of Daryl has a purpose and was is also a good man. She's trying to fulfill him that everything happens for a reason, I believe. So, so let's, let's go back to right, right after that. Uh, we see Gregory and Simon have, a, have a, a, an exchange. Um, Simon likes tequila now. He's a, he's a strange beast. But we see Gregory. Because he's all, all his whiskey got taken, man. Gin. Or, yeah. yeah. All his gin got taken. Never is all the gin. He was a gin man. Well, that's what he said on this episode, but he, he said, hey, do you like bourbon? And he said, and he tried to give him a bottle. He said, oh, I do, and had him take all the cases of it, yeah. uh, you know, when they came last time. Yeah, so um, we see Gregory take Simon by himself and talk to him. Now, Gregory's a real shysty dude, but he sees the writing on the wall. Everybody's for Maggie, pro Maggie, they want Maggie to be their leader. Gregory, he, he, he skips on life because he was the owner of the place. So everyone kind of does things for him. He doesn't do anything at all for anybody. So we, we see him kind of separating the groups out, making everyone kind of the, uh, divide and conquer. He's almost kind of a pussy version of Negan yeah, at that spot. Exactly. And it's an ivy way to, to, yeah. to rule over people. And, and we, he, he told Simon. Well, we, we see this. He, he's telling Simon that, you know, 
he's basically telling me, what if my leadership challenge, you know, stuff could happen around here. He says, well, I'll give you this, a time and a place to meet me. You come here and we'll take care of that. So Gregory thinks he's got a way out. And then after that little meeting, we see him with the, with the Jesus later on in the episode. And he's saying, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk to me like that with all these yeah, saviors. We'll, we'll with all these saviors running around. You never know what could happen. Yeah. He's like, oh, are you just threatening me? Yeah. Did you just threaten me? So yeah. you know. at any moment, Gregory can tell him that Maggie and Daryl are here. He, he keeps that like, close to his, to his breast, but, you know, it, it's really kind of weird why he's not saying anything yet. Like, he might wait for a big, huge setup, but he knows if he does that everyone will go against him. He's so, never seen Gregory do nothing but own the place. He's never killed a zombie. He's always just sitting there getting drunk in his room, looking out his nice library window and that, that, watching everybody do their their work and this and that. Yeah. Uh, getting back to uh, getting back to Rosita and Sasha's little venture there, they're talking about Abraham, and then they're looking through the sniper rifle. They're getting hyped up about Abraham. So they're looking through the sniper rifle, bam, they see Negan. And yeah. when Simon came to uh, the hilltop, he took their doctor. And they see the doctor pull up. They, they got Negan on their sights, and then he's hugging on the doctor, and then he's hugging on Eugene, and then they hear Eugene on the radio saying, this is uh, Chief Engineer uh, uh, Eugene, a.k.a. known as Negan, yeah. and this and that. And uh, yeah, here, here we go again. Uh, Rosita had her chance to kill Negan. She was point blank range and shot a gun at him, and he caught it with a bat. This was, and then Sasha now has Negan in, in her in his crosshair, and she doesn't pull the trigger either. So it's just, it's not a clear shot. Well, it takes a while to line up that shot. You, know, you got to go forward, so I can account for he's walking and this and that. And so yeah. the right when she's getting enough time to, he, he's got somebody in the way yeah. here, he's got somebody in the way there, and then when he's walking out, one of his guys is in the way of him. Yeah, it's, Sasha even mentioned she like, has one like, bullet. So Sasha right? even mentioned, no, she has multiple bullets. Oh, okay. And Sasha, Sasha even says, you know what, we might as well not take the best shot. We'll be out here as long as we can to, to get to get this shot. And then Rosita's more like action now. And she wants to go inside and kill him on the inside. And so I was like, if we do that now, we'll die then. We'll be up time to do it from here, do it right. So kind of difference in the opinions for the whole kill. But they break into the compound and they see Eugene out there and try to save him. And this D bag. That motherfucker, he ain't budging. He's loving his power. He finally got power over him. Do the gun. <laughs> yeah, he's got people under him now, just like we've seen when he took all the cold medicine to make the, the pill to kill Negan and then uh, took it back. Um, you know, you seen right there when he took it back, he said, nope, because this pill is for Negan. I'm not, I am smarter than you are, you know, all that good shit. And he ain't going to leave. And then, uh, there, uh, he, I mean, they shoot the guy that's, that's with Eugene. And then Eugene runs back and says what he's got to say, runs back in. And then they, they're cutting open the fence. Sasha fucking locks it on her and says, hey, look, it's not your time. Everybody has their time, right? Everybody needs their purpose of dying. Yeah, they it's both, not yours. They both agreed it wasn't Abe's time. And Sasha really re reinitiates that uh, with, 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 um, with, with Rosita and says, it's not your time. And Sorry. being on a Star Trek show. So after she, after she cut herself <laughs> into the, the fence, she wrapped her back against so she couldn't get through. And ran in there herself. So one person actually walked inside. Or he was like, Shh, what am I going to do? So she runs away, and she's running away. She sees a shadowy figure with a crossbow looking at her, and she stops. Sees him. It looks like fucking Daryl, but I got, an, I got an in depth from this guy and the producer saying, It's white. I know it's white. You tell by his hair, it's white. It's going to be white. And Daryl ain't going nowhere near that place right now because he knows he's been in there. Give it, your, it ain't easy street in there. Give me your in depth knowledge, why. Yeah, absolutely. The, I give you that depth knowledge, why, because in the comic books, Dwight is a big, huge part of, of the takeover. And they need someone from the inside to make it all happen. And Dwight sees Rosita, and they're, they're going to come together to make this happen. It's good to have a guy around like this that basically reads the Negan hey, Bible for you. Comments are different than the show, but I'm telling you, it's playing out. The last episode is a play. Hey, a couple of things well. have happened to the T, like to the T with Glenn. <laughs> good review, baby. Good review. <laughs> Here's the part of the show where we're going to review this beautiful bottle of whiskey for you guys. This is, this is a, about a $16 bottle. You know, anywhere you go, it's a party night bottle, and it goes good with 7-Up. I mean, it's Seagram's of 7, that's one of the popular drinks in the bar, casinos, you know, while you're gambling and stuff. And uh, I don't know who you think would drink it on the show. Yeah, we'll church it up. You know, VO is a little better than regular Seagram. It's good. It's definitely a mix of whiskey, Trevor said. You mix it with your drink, 7-Up, our 7-7. Seven seven. We'll drink it out here, 707. Um, I think who drink this whiskey? This is definitely a someone who's very into this, not anything special. Which I think would probably go along with Sasha because she's very much a totally through right now. Uh, nothing, nothing bland. Everything's very bland for her. Life sucks for her. So this is very much a life sucks whiskey.
Yeah. <laughs> now she's in for it, huh? Yeah, you drink some cigarettes and you break into a compound that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, she wanted to like crazy. So I see some photos that, uh, yeah, it looks like she got caught. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Here's the Sasha. All right. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> The year was 1913, and Joseph E. Seagram was busily working on a special project in his Waterloo, Ontario distillery. To celebrate his son's wedding, Seagram was developing a special blend of the finest whiskeys for him, and thus the BL legend was born. Let's hope the folks at Diageo uh, now own the BL brand. Remember that date and release a special cemetery? Well, cemetery edition for us in 2013. <laughs> This is part of the show where we like to get try to get each other way drunker because only one of us has to drive home. So pretty much just trying to get him fucked up, and I've done my homework, which is which is very rare. Very rare. Well, yeah. he, he's done his homework, which is very rare. So, anyway. So, uh, All the seeds to travel and go first because it's a long night for this guy. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's start with my super, super pooper question. What does the sign say behind Sasha when she is talking to Jesus? And in what directions? In what directions is each sentence pointing? Not yet. I'm still, I'm still getting ready. And the thing is, Rosita is going, with or without me. Uh, I think we're gonna go uh, living history craft to the left, uh, visitor center to the right, gift shop to the right, uh, garden to the left, and parking to the right. Is that your final answer? Living history craft to the left, Visitor center to the right. Get shop to the right. Left garden. Uh, parking to the right. Okay. Well, all those were correct except what the top of the sign says. It says Barrington House. Say the question again. It says, "What does the sign say behind Sasha when she is talking to Jesus?" All right. And, and which and, and which which directions are all the sentences pointed in? So that was good that you. In in white letters on this sign, there was Barrington House at the top. I'll take my question now, please. Mm -hmm. Um, in one scene, this is actually a very sharper question. Which she's gonna have. Um. Okay. The doctor that gets taken from the hilltop um, has well, it's connected to the other doctor the other, the other place the they story. got the iron to the face um, how are both doctors connected and what are their names uh, brothers and um, one was Dr. Stevenson and one was Dr. Uh, Gerard. Hartman Carson and Emmett Carson. <laughs> Good try. Hartman Carson and Emmett Carson? Harlan. Harlan and Emmett. So it was Dr. Harlan that got taken this time? Uh, I'm not sure. But I asked for their name and how they're connected. Hmm. Well, I still got it wrong either way, but I think you're wrong about the doctor that got taken. <sighs> Go ahead, brother. All right. In this episode, after the first credit, <laughs> how long before the first word is spoken on this episode? Hi. Hang on a second. I'll give you within a 20 second window if you get close. 21 seconds. 
No, it was five minutes and 42 <laughs> seconds before uh, Sasha said hi to Rosita in the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, um, Um, we got him in a mama, 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 when Sasha and uh, Sasha and, and um, Jesus are talking in the room, you, you mentioned earlier. Um, there's a, there's a, a hat rack behind them. Uh, what's on the hat rack? It's a long life, and then it isn't. A backpack, a red hat, leather jacket. Red, yellow, leather, yellow, <laughs> red, leather, yellow. Leather. Uh, we're drinking. We're drinking. The way we both win is if we both get all the questions wrong. That's winning right there. Uh, that was a good call. I was like, yeah, I would look at that fucking sign. Yeah, no <laughs> shit, bro. I'm telling you, right there, you're going to do it. Alrighty. Thank you, buddy. Here we go. In this episode, what kind of ice cream does Simon speak of? You like ice cream? We have ice cream. We have a lady that makes cardamom gelato. Shit you not. Vanilla. <laughs> Cardamom gelato. <laughs> Italian. <laughs> Fine ice cream. cream. He's, he's, Trick question. Before he takes the doctor, he says, you don't need a pack. We got what you need there. If you don't, we'll grab it. Hey, do you like ice cream? We got a lady there that makes cardamom gelato. <laughs> so out at the, um, um, the what's the not the knife range, Sasha, sorry, um, Maggie shows a, a group of 12 top people how to use a knife. How many people were in the group she's teaching? Uh, that would be... Go, go ahead and say 18 people. They're actually 13 people. 13 people? So 15 if you count. If you, oh, count, if you count Eden and Maggie. Yeah. All right. Right on. Well, guess who wins? We do. We do. Winning. <laughs> Action, flaxen. Who's the dark figure that we see at the end of the episode? Is it this guy? Or the Dwight? Some say no, but we don't have Dwight here. We got the. Who is that? Oh, no, this is Carl. Same thing. If you take the hat off Carl. He has the same long hair and put a crossbow on him. Maybe this crossbow it looks just like him. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you guys for sticking around with our drunk asses for another show. There's only two left. The liver's about to get a break. You know, <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool. Here's some internet shit. Yeah, uh, thank you again to uh, www.fourwhiskeylovers.com for finding the whiskey site. Please buy a whiskey from fourwhiskeylovers.com. Also, want to say thank you to us, and please uh, visit us often at the official fan page of Walking After Whiskey on Facebook. Trevor has questions all the time. We got like 14 pump up to give away. We don't can't keep them. We don't want them. You guys can win them. We'll send them to you because that's how crazy we are. We're going to tear down our forts that we made with all the Funko Pops and give them to you guys. Let those too. Thank you again for watching. We love you guys. Have a good time. Cheers. Cheers.